You need an Ecolab Scientific Clean here. And you need it here. And here. And here. Which is why the scientific expertise that helps operating rooms stay clean is now helping the places you go every day too. Seek a commitment to clean. Look for the Ecolab Science Certified Seal. Welcome to ACF Chefs Forum. Thank you to Ecolab, the global leader in water, hygiene, and infection prevention solutions and services that protect people and vital resources. Ecolab delivers comprehensive solutions, data-driven insights, and personalized service to advance food safety, maintain clean and safe environments, optimize water and energy use, and improve <coughs> operational efficiencies and sustainability for customers in over 170 countries around the world. So again, welcome to today's webinar. Now more than ever, it's important for culinarians to connect, to share, and to offer inspiration and mentorship, which is exactly why we are excited to have experts here with information just for you, the leaders and future leaders of the food service industry. I'm Jackie Bressinger, American Culinary Federation's Director of Strategic Partnerships, and I'm delighted to welcome you to a very special webinar and appreciate you tuning in for this important discussion on an issue that is top of mind for most culinarians, the staffing crisis. And at this time, I'd like to welcome today's guest moderator, Chef Jay-Z. How's it going, everybody? Welcome, family, HCF family. I see everybody from Utah and Ohio and Florida and Alabama and Canada and California. Um, thank you for joining us for today's Chef's Forum. We know that this topic and discussion are really, really important. And so we're gonna be taking questions for the panel live during this webinar. Um, I'll need you to do that. Uh, be sure to do that in the chat function to collaborate with other chefs and students that are all tuning in for the Q&A function to pose questions to today's fe uh, featured chefs and um, uh, esteemed members of our, the panel. The panel is amazing. We all had a little brief discussion before. They have lots of background. Um, so please feel free to ask questions and we're going to get to those. So, okay, let's get this, this discussion going on the chat. Please let us know where you're tuning in from today. And I see some of you have already started doing that. Uh, hello from Egypt. That's a really awesome one. Hello out there in Egypt. That's really cool. Um, to kick things off, I do want to go around the panel so we can meet everybody. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, everybody. 30 seconds. Give us your cliff notes on who you are and what you do. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm Chef Jay-Z, Chairman of the Board for the ACF Chefs of Charlotte Chapter here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been with the ACF probably, oh my goodness, going on, I'd say at least 19 years. I work for Morrison Healthcare. I'm the corporate R&D chef for Morrison Healthcare, and I oversee all 1,000 hospitals, nationwide recipe development, R&D for the retail side of the establishments. So there you go. So with that being said, I'm going to walk over to Chef Wes Tyler. Chef Wes. Hello. Thank you, Chef Jay-Z. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jackie, and everybody from the ACF. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Chef Wes Tyler. Uh, I'm the executive chef here at the Club at Carlton Woods in the Woodlands, Texas. We're just north of uh, Houston, and we've got a couple of different properties, uh, too, uh, and about 700 members. So uh, we're spread out. We've got, uh, got, got quite a bit going on, but um, looking forward to sharing with everyone today. Uh, and hearing what the other uh, chefs and panelists have to, have to say as well. So thank you. Chef West, thank you. Thanks for being here. Very much appreciative. Um, I'd like to move on to uh, Alice Chang, please. Hi, thanks, Jeff Z. I'm Alice Chang, the founder and CEO of Culinary Agents. Um, it's an online uh, job marketplace for the hospitality industry, specifically for the hospitality industry. We have over a million users across the U.S., in front of house, back of house, hourly, salary. Um, and uh, we support about 30,000 businesses as well. Our goal is to make it as easy as possible for talent to find your opportunities and to apply to them and for you to manage and for businesses to manage the process as well. I'm very excited for the conversation. Oh, so, uh, and it's really important to all of us, like I said, so thank you for being here. Um, Chef Jeremy Soros. Yes, absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Soros. I am the Chef Cronar of the Ritz-Carlton Orlando Grand Lakes. Um, I've been here for about 12 years, started actually from the bottom uh, as an intermediate cook. Um, I've worked my way up and uh, now I oversee about a third of the resort. So, you know, it's a really, really uh, big part of my life and um, I'm really, really excited just to be a part of this and to share, you know, uh, what I've seen and, and what 
our culture has done as Ritz Carlton uh, to help with a lot of this, uh, these crises. So. Excellent. Well, Chef, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. I was there. Yeah. I've, I've, I've drank in the Kool-Aid of the Ritz Carlton. I, so I was just going to say, I, I, it sounds like you've had a taste before. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, with that being said, we're going to move on to uh, Dr. Cynthia Mahaya. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So my name is Cynthia Mejia. I'm an associate professor at UCF Rosen College of Hospitality Management. We are here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, prior to this part of my career, I was a chef and, and, and worked in food and beverage on the hotel side for about 20 years. And then I gradually moved over to academia. Uh, just a little shout out about Rosen College. We are the largest hospitality college in North America with over 3,000 students. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm sure there'll be some questions for you. Thank you for being here, definitely. All right, so let's jump into our first discussion topic. We know that uh, food service industry has had a lot, and I mean a lot of turnover, a lot of things happening and most kitchens are having trouble staying fully staffed. I feel it in the hospital industry and in the, in the healthcare. Um, so what is your view on the current state of the culinary job market? And I'm gonna ask uh, Alice Chang first. Yeah, sure, thank you, Chef. Um, the, you know, there's definitely always been, pre-pandemic, there is always challenges with staffing in this industry, whether or not it was volume or quality, um, you know, that, that I think is, is something that is not different. What is different is um, the, the dynamics of, of job seekers, uh, what they're looking for, their priority, and the businesses uh, having to deal with not only um, you know, recovery, growing, but uh, a new level of competition, competition not just from other parts of the hospitality industry, but also other industries. Um, and I think that what we're seeing is um, businesses, large and small, looking at um, how they can creatively um, source talent, quality talent from all different areas. What tools are they using? Are they, um, are they multi-channel uh, promoting their opportunities? Do they have an employer brand with an employer value proposition that is clear and easily understood? All these little tools to support them, you know, um, standing out amongst all the other opportunities. Excellent. And I asked you first because, you know, we look for people like you that are going to bring in hirees for us. So I wanted you to see, I wanted to hear your perspective first and now Chef Wes. So the question was, what is your view on the current state of the culinary job market for you? Yeah. Well, thank you, I uh, appreciate it. So, you know, right now uh, from, from my perspective, what um, really seeing is, is a lack of, of staff, a lack of really even applicants uh, coming into the industry. There's also increased wages across the board, uh, at least here in Texas, for sure. So we're having to remain competitive with that, uh, which can always pose problems for, for businesses if it's not forecasted or, or projected. Um, and even beyond the, the financial uh, standings and increases, I think that we're seeing, um, especially with uh, people that have returned or that have been uh, in the kitchen throughout the pandemic, uh, there's a larger focus on quality of life and uh, work-life balance. Um, that, that employers are seeking out uh, more so now than ever. Before the, the pandemic, I think we were really thriving uh, and the industry was on the uptick. Um, lots of people entering the industry, lots of uh, new uh, additions to culinary school. And post-pandemic, I think we've seen a lot of, of people exit the industry, uh, whether they were furloughed or took some time off or their businesses closed. And uh, I don't see a lot of them returning, uh, which seems to be one of the bigger problems. Um, and the, the gap between the experienced uh, uh, professionals that have been in the industry and the ones that are entering the industry seems to have widened also, uh, which, you know, kind of poses a problem as we try to fill those voids. Uh, you've either got the top end of the extreme of people that are really, really um, seasoned or the people that are really um, fresh and green and, as they enter the industry and then, you know, trying to find that medium has been more of a struggle. Right. Okay, um, Chef Jeremy, where where are you stand? Where is your stance in the uh, the hotel world? Yeah, you know, I, I I really second what Chef West was saying that you know it's it's really people's just mindsets have changed since the pandemic. You know, even 
working for a luxury resort that, you know, uh, our rooms go anywhere between, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars sometimes, uh, and if not more, um, you know, combating with with just the demand of the guests nowadays and 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 really just the expectations of, you know, people are, are tired of being inside. They really want these experiences and they want all these, you know, grandiose things. And, and we'll, we're going to be able to do that. But at, at the same time, you know, we're pushing a lot of our, our team further than we've ever pushed them before. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of stress at home and, and, you know, everybody's got their own thing going on, but, you know, from a, from our perspective, you know, we deal with the same exact thing, no matter, you know, if it's a mom and pop place or, you know, a, a five-star resort, you know, it's, it's, you still see that, that same type of, uh, as, as chef West said, the really seasoned cooks that have been there for a while and kind of are in their industry. And then ones that are wanting to be into the industry because, you know, social media and food network and all these things that have really uh, been front and center for the past 10 years. Um, now, being able to get into the industry and realizing that, okay, maybe this is more work than I really thought it was and, and then kind of quickly backing out. So, you know, it, it that's been the struggle is really kind of being, being able to like build on the people that are just starting out. It, we're having a really tough time with that. Um, Agreed. No, definitely. All right, Dr. Cynthia, um, what is your view on the current state of the culinary job market? So I can speak to that from the perspective of on our restaurant management degree in that program. And, um, you know, prior to the pandemic, we, we had a good number of organizations and restaurant companies coming to our campus to recruit our, our students. But now it is uh, really uh, excessive. There are so many companies coming here and students have a lot more choices than they used to have before. And kind of speaking to that, that gap, that experience gap, either people have a ton of experience or not very much. You know, we've, we've tried for a really long time to have this internship program, which, which works really well. So we have an internship where our students can go and work in uh, local companies, local restaurants, and kind of gain that experience. But now with, you know, such a high demand, they'll, they're willing to take whoever, <laughs> whoever can come in and they'll, they'll take them at a, you know, an entry level, but uh, the need is the need. And so sometimes they have to push them up into those higher, higher levels. So it's a little bit of a scramble. And, you know, while it's lovely and it's wonderful for students to feel so needed and, and have so many opportunities, it's also a little bit overwhelming for them to, to see that and make a choice about where they would like to work. So with that being said, Chef Jeremy, do you, do you hire interns? So we're in the process of, of kind of making a um, really a big push um, to, to open up an intern slash extern type of uh, uh, program. Uh, it's something that we, at, after we came back from the pandemic, we really looked at the resort and said, okay, we have to think differently about everything, uh, about the way that we hire, the way that we uh, staff, the way that we just do everything. And one of the things that we really brought up was we've got to start I don't want to say young because, you know, there are people that this is their second and third career, but, you know, people uh, green to the, the industry. So uh, it's something that we're hopefully going to pilot uh, by the end of this year um, to start an internship program uh, where you'll basically be able to have credits um, through a specific college um, to come work here. So you'll get paid and then you also get college credits. So that's something that, you know, us as a whole and, and, and you know, our, our, leadership team and our ownership team is, is very, very behind all that. And, uh, you know, obviously Ritz Carlton is on the leading edge of a lot of the things that, that go out there. Um, so, you know, we, we're, we want to be a part of the, the hiring part too, not just the luxury resort. So. Yeah. And the training. So when you hire you, exactly, train, you know? exactly, exactly. Chef Wes, how about you on the intern situation? We do, we do have interns. Uh, we take, um, interns from our high school, uh, local high school culinary programs uh, and do um, uh, a short spend something nine weeks with them and they come after school uh, and work for, for a few hours a day. And then we also do uh, internship programs with the universities, uh, the local culinary universities around here. Um, and I've got, I think, four or five on my staff that we did the internship program with. Uh, we paid them 
throughout the course of that, and then we hired them on afterwards. So uh, we're also we're, we're we're always reaching out and trying to, to stay uh, relevant in the community. Um, and then internally, we do uh, have some somewhat of an internship program it's, it's for our junior to uh, program that we developed, so we can continue to grow and and uh, teach our staff and give them the opportunity to advance within our our operation as well. So. We're kind of touching all the areas, uh, I think, and just really uh, doing whatever we can to make sure that we're we're uh, available. And is this both uh, front of the house and back of the house? Just curious, like it, it, it is. Yes. For both? Uh, uh, so the internships for high school are front of the house and the back of the house, and they actually rotate. So we'll have uh, anywhere from uh, 15 to 30 um, uh, participants, and then I think they'll spend uh, a week or two at each. Um, uh, outlet or, or facility or, or area of operation, uh, and then we'll get to spend some time with them. And if they have shown uh, invested interest in, say, culinary, then we can bring them on and give them some additional training and, and time. That's fantastic. Right. Um, Alice, just a quick question: like, with, with as far as interns, what do you see? Obviously, it's a great, great thing. We're teaching. We're bringing kids in. We're bringing students and interns at any age. Actually, an intern can be, but um, what what do you see as far as uh, bringing interns on board and, and working through the pat like you said you're doing your whole your vetting basically how does that work yeah i think any sort of program um businesses uh and uh you know how big or small can offer for learning opportunities whether they're titled as intern extern whether they're just a structure that allows for you know people who are are wanting to get into the industry um uh to to you know find a place where they can learn and as long as they have the right attitude right which is you know half if not more of the battle sometimes um you know they're, they're in an environment that will actually train them or teach them um and i think that's one of the things that has been long-standing and great about this industry specifically uh for all all of you folks is your willingness to to train to identify those who are motivated and have the right you know soft skills and, and dedication and to nurture them so that they can grow within the organization or within a particular function, which is, is something that continues to be very exciting, I think, for both uh, entry level and existing uh, professionals in this industry, the, the, the goal to keep learning and to, you know, land that that next opportunity to build their own career path. Um, and, and might I just add with career paths, um, one thing that we are seeing, which is very exciting, um, that's different is you're seeing a lot more uh, folks who perhaps were traditionally only working in restaurants now looking for hotel type roles, uh, food service, just kind of opening up the aperture. I think that's really in line with priority shifting, perhaps also physically moving to uh, a different you know, city or relocating and looking for different opportunities. Very, very cool. So with that being said, I'm kind of going to, I'm touching on a lot of students because if there's students on this call, there's a lot of people, I want them to know that take the risk, get out there, try these new ways. So for the chefs first, Chef Jeremy, I'm going to start with you. What advice do you have for students who may be turning in their, turning in their, ah, sorry, what advice do you have for students who may be tuning in that to their educators that they, and wow, I can't believe I can't say this. I'm not even going to read that anymore. What advice do you have for the students and the educators out there when the students get out? What can you tell them to be job ready? What do they need to know when they come apply for a job with you? What do they need? What, what do they need to be hired? What are you looking for? Exactly what you said, Chef Jay. Uh, take any opportunity that comes to you. Uh, there's been many times that people have, uh, you know, offered me something or, or, you know, some sort of like position that I'm like, um, and I'm not too sure. You know, I started as a restaurant cook here um, and then I was approached to, to move to the banquet operation. To me, I was a restaurant cook through and through, you know, that kind of, you know, that that pirate atmosphere where the, the you know, <laughs> where everybody's just really having a great time on the line. And I never thought I wanted to be a banquet person. So but I took that opportunity and it really helped me to grow as a person. OK, maybe it's not my favorite thing to do, but you can always learn something from something. You know, there's there's. I always say, and I tell my staff all the time, I can learn any anything from anybody. I can learn something from the dishwasher that started on day one. I can learn something from somebody that's been here for 45 years. Um, really taking the opportunity to like sit back, be humble, and take any opportunity that comes your way. Okay, you're gonna 
uh, be offered an opportunity to maybe work in a salad station or a garbage or something like that, that maybe isn't as exciting as working on the grill. But at the end of the day, you're going to take something from there and learn from it. You're going to learn, uh, you know, recipe manipulation. You're going to learn so many different things that you can add to your repertoire later on in life. Okay. Maybe you're not going to be a quintessential banquet person, but you can learn so much from, from the math that they do and just the way that they set things up and uh, really don't be stuck in a box that you want to work in fine dining for the rest of your career, because you can learn so much more from, from every single person that you come across in, in this great hospitality world that we all are a part of. So, Oh my goodness. I so agree. Like when I was in college, it was, I'm going to own my own restaurant. Well, guess what? I never had my own restaurant and now I make recipes for healthcare. Who knew? So, right. all right, Chef Wes. So what advice do you have for the students that are coming out for job ready? What are you looking for for them to be hired? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I would just, again, uh, uh, parallel exactly what Chef Jeremy said. You know, it's, it's hard to follow because I have all those same views. Um, but gaining as much experience as you can uh, and absorbing everything, learning as much as you can um, uh, while you can. And then once you figure out what you like to do or what area of the industry you want to be in, then follow uh, or pursue a job that kind of fits that career path. Um, you really want to start to focus in and, and uh, uh, refine your skills and dial in on, on uh, what area you want to be um, involved with the most, whether it's clubs or restaurants or uh, more specific, uh, if it's butchery or, you know, whatever it is, you want to you make sure that you follow that. Um, and then staying involved in, in culinary communities outside of work and networking is also another good thing. Uh, so you're aware of what's going on. Uh, you're, you're involved in, in um, in the middle with the trends and, and just following along with the industry as it progresses as well. Okay, very, very cool. So we talked about students, we talked about getting them hired, what you're all looking for. We talked about how important it is. Um, I have a question here now, it was something that I'm thinking about. So a lot of people, and you, you all said in the beginning, you know, you, you be more aware, be humble, look for opportunities. One of the things I wrote down was um, engaging your staff. So how do you celebrate your culinary team members in front of the house? Do you do anything for them also? How do you celebrate your teams in your facilities? Um, I do want to start with Chef Jeremy and then I'm going to move around a little bit. So Chef Jeremy, do you celebrate your teams? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Chef Jay, as you know, uh, you know, uh, Ritz Carlton is, that's a big, big vein of our, our culture is celebrating our teams. And, um, you know, we have a, a pillar of ours that, we say that our ladies and gentlemen, which are what we call our employees, um, are just as important as our guests. Because at the end of the day, uh, if you have happy employees and you take care of your employees and you really understand, sorry, <laughs> you really understand what makes them tick and really uh, the things that you can um, assist them with, they're they're going to be so much more engaged with the guests and they're really going to be able to go out there and 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 do the best that they can and with a smile on their face and really push forth um, more than what they, they were normally doing in a, in a job that you just punch in and punch out, you know, by mm -hmm. celebrating, you know, we, we get together and we have lineup every morning, which is basically this big meeting where um, all the teams just, just they're discuss the day. Uh, we talk about, you know, what's important, what's the, uh, and as, as well as our culture, there's always a culture highlight each, each and every morning, as well as, you know, if there's a trip advisor thing, if something, somebody had a comment about the food, we bring it up, and, you know, we're clapping and we're, you know, giving each other really a lot of uh, praise and, and even throughout the day, you know, a simple thank you and a pat on the back. And, you know, I can go on and on about the things that we, you know, would go on, but handwriting somebody a note um, at the end of a, an amazing service, you know, just to say, thank you. You know, uh, you knocked it out of the park today to sit there and, and write a note for five minutes. What does that do to you versus what it means to someone else? You know, the, it, it's really taking the time to see your people as actual human beings and, and treating them as such. Um, it really makes a difference in the end of working those big long shifts and those, you know, those big crazy hours sometimes that we have to do. But at the end of the day, they're, it, it's just so incredible. That's it's so true. Celebrating with teams is really important and sharing those moments. I, I totally agree. There's a lot of lineups done 
in the places that I've been with the, the company I work for, you do lineups and you always celebrate someone, but not just, not just celebrating to celebrate them, but be genuine about it. I think that's right. important too. Yeah. Um, so I just want to move on a little quicker here. So there was a question that came in. So are there certain credentials, education, or experience that rises a candidate to the top of your interview list? So this question I want to ask, I want to ask Alice first, like, so when you think about what chefs are looking for and individuals looking for in the industry, is there anything you could give advice to like, oh my goodness, put that on your resume. What, what are some things you should be adding to your resume or adding to your interview skills that you would say that could rise someone possibly to the top of the list? Um, well, this is a, this is a tricky one that, that I'm starting with because it, because it depends, right? And it depends on the, the job, the individual, et cetera. Um, I think uh, I will, I will, I will offer a blanket, um, overall professionalism. I think one of the things that I want to remind when, when you're, when you're filling out, uh, forms or applying or considering applying is always make sure that you are putting your best foot forward, uh, as a, as a professional, um, and, uh, follow the, uh, the processes that are requested in order to apply to positions, um, you know, uh, include cover letters, fig figure out, you know, how do you, some, some of you who are starting out don't have a long list of, of experiences. Um, whatever experience that you do have, make sure you, you highlight them because the expectation on the, uh, on the hiring side is, is, is trying to assess, you know, does this person, uh, have the right attitude or do they want to learn? Have they tried to find certain experiences? Do they do in internships, externships or, or help out at a local spot or, or whatnot? What sets them apart? Um, so you know, don't be shy, brag about any experience that you have um, and just know that on the other side, the expectation is not that you come with a long list of um, prior you know, years of, of, of work. Um, it's more, you know, how do you conduct yourself um, are you uh, eager? Uh, do you have the right attitude? And you know, are you are you ready and willing to learn and roll up your sleeves and, and, and be part of the team? Perfect, Chef Wes. I'm going to deflect that question to you, man. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I'll touch on those uh, points. I, I agree. I think it um, really depends on the person, the individual. Uh, if it's you know someone that's younger, just entering the industry, um, then you know if they have any education, that's always a plus. Uh, and do they have any relevant job experience or experience at all? Um, and then if they're, you know, mid-tier, what are their capabilities? Do they have certifications? Do they have the education? Uh, have they been uh, in a related position or a concept? Uh, and, and most importantly, you know, what, what is it that they're, uh, that they're looking for in a job? Or is their career path mm -hmm. going to line up with what we're going to offer? And, you know, for, for supervisory or higher-end uh, uh, employees, then you know we want to see uh, what their background is, what they've uh, uh, done in the past, and, and what they're capable of doing. And then we'll bring them in, oftentimes for uh, uh, practicals or demos, so we can get a feel of how they actually cook uh, and what their styles are, um, and, and how they're going to mesh with the team and, and work on the line. Uh, so it really depends on the individual and and what position you're you're looking to fill, but. Uh, overall, anything that's industry related that's going to add uh, value to um, you as an individual is going to be something that's going to set you apart from, from everybody else. Okay. All right, Dr. Cynthia. Can I say Dr. Cynthia? I feel like that's just Dr. Me Dr. Mejia, right? That's how you would say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Dr. you could call me Cynthia. That's fine. I also <laughs> like to be called chef too. Oh, uh, chef even better. Yeah. I work just as hard for that. <laughs> uh, um, you know, this is something that's really, um, uh, uh, really important to all of us um, here at, at Rosen College and other places where where I've taught. And in that is, there's this perception, there's this gap. But you know, say, you know, what is the value of learning about culinary or learning about restaurant management or you know some HR things or marketing or whatever whatever goes with with restaurant or, uh, operations and such, and we we had to face a kind of a hard reality here um, in, in academia, is that there there was this perception gap. So we went out to our industry partners. And you know, really worked with them on you know how do we close this gap? Because our industry partners were saying, 
well, you know, we've got people who've worked for 20 years and are trying for these same positions that someone's come out of school thinks that they they also belong in. And so how do we do this? So it's a it's a problem or, or not a problem. It's like a barrier from both sides. So we've been really working hard with industry and we've come up with some solutions like start your career in college where we're partnering together. We're doing purposeful things with industry. We're trying to understand what their needs are. We're trying to tell them that, you know, parents maybe want their kids to support their kids to learn and you know, go to culinary school or go to restaurant management school. So we want to support parents and, you know, educating their, their kids. And so, you know, we're, we're coming from both sides and we're slowly understanding and it takes a lot of conversations. There's definitely mistakes. There's no right or wrong, but it's really tight knit partnerships that, you know, industry can have with, you know, culinary programs or other academic programs. I think this is like the best of both worlds. And, and it really takes the right partners and letting down these perceptions to, to, to both rework it and make it valuable, especially for the student, especially for the employee, especially for industry. Yes, I, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> You're right. Um, I just want to remind everybody watching, please uh, tune in, do a Q&A, give us some questions if you have any. Um, next question I'm going to go with are um, where and how are chefs finding qualified candidates? Alice, I want to start with you. So with, where are people looking that you think? Uh, well, culinary agents, of course. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think, I think in, in, a, in the days and age now where, um, again, this industry has such also a, a generational diversity where you have folks who are experienced, they might use different tools and you have uh, folks who are, are entering the industry or of younger of age and they're used to different tools. So um, we, always, uh, we always advise uh, people to take a, take a step back and, and, and use the tools that are most efficient and effective and targeted to hospitality. Use your local programs, your schools. Um, there's a lot of uh, other local programs that might also produce trained um, uh, trained uh, folks or, or culinary programs um, uh, to jumpstart. Um, there's uh, a lot of online job sites now, uh, culinary agents distributes to uh, over 500 partners. So make sure you find sites that are being efficient and effective for you and not just a site that's just going to produce a lot more um, people that you need to flip through and dig through. Um, word of mouth is an age old, you know, that's never going to go away. I think this is one of the industries that does it the best, but consider what, uh, what drives the word of mouth, right? To, um, to the earlier comment from, from Chef Jeremy, you know, culture, you know, the things that you're doing by making your, your teams happy, they talk. They, they word of mouth it, right? They, they're talking, they're bragging, they're social media sharing um, and, and other people are watching. And then all of a sudden someone's like, this person's very happy at work. That might be a, a great place for me to explore. So just be aware that, um, you know, all of those other things that are happening uh, are, are benefiting your potential recruiting efforts that you might not even have any control over, both on the positive and the negative. Correct. So now, um... Alice, sorry, but chefs, where are you looking? <laughs> Chef Wes, where are you looking for candidates? So, yeah, we're, we're looking everywhere uh, right now, kind of exploring all of our, our outlets. Um, we're going to job fairs. Uh, we're talking with the schools and universities, uh, uh, recruiters, uh, anything that we can do. And then social media is probably the most prominent that I've seen in, in recent months and, and years. Um, really just staying relevant and being available on social media, uh, highlighting what your uh, teams uh, are doing, um, what kind of jobs you're looking for. Uh, we offer sign-on bonuses, really anything that's going to be attractive to uh, someone that's looking uh, for, a, for a job or, or a home in the kitchen. So um, in addition to uh, everything that, uh, that Alice said, you know, we're, we're doing the same thing and then just really searching for any possible way that we can, we can uh, attract staff, um, including with our own staff, you know, talking with them. Hey, do you have any friends? Do you know anybody that might want to come and work uh, or fit the bill for, for what, we're, what we're trying to do here? Um, so that's, that's really what we're, we're focusing on, uh, especially now. Is that we need staff just like everyone else. Um, and so it's important that we, we use every possible outlet that we have. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Definitely. And every outlet is what I said too. And I'm, I'm just going to bank off of word of mouth. You know, someone typed in word of mouth and who, you know, works, you know, it is true, but I'll tell you, it's the package. It's not just who, you know, because you could know a lot of people, but you need to put your foot where your mouth is, mouth where your foot is, whatever it is, you got to put your foot forward and you really need to make sure you can do what you say you can do. And then um, I, I feel personality helps when I'm interviewing. I think if someone comes off as very personable, that's going to be someone you can train. So just know those things. Um, Chef Jeremy, um, I'm going to ask you the same question. How, uh, where and how are you finding qualified candidates? Yeah, you know, just to piggyback off of uh, Chef West that, you know, all those avenues with the schools and everything like that. But one of the number one that I really like is, is uh, when you're out and about just on your off days, you know, you go to a restaurant and, you know, the, the server is super personable and somebody that you can see yourself working with, you know, give them a card, uh, tell them to give you a call, you know, maybe it's not necessarily the you know, the, the, the cuisine that they're into or, or whatever like that. But, you know, you can always teach someone a job. You can't teach someone passion, you know, so you're always, uh, we're always looking everywhere, you know, you're in the grocery store and you happen to see someone that's, that's really, um, you know, just very personable and, and going above and beyond. There's somebody that you can find a job for them. Uh, a job is just a, a task that you're doing, but at the end of the day, finding those people that you can really mess with, uh, you know, mesh with and, and they'll be great on your team that, you know, that you just have to be really creative on that end um, as well as obviously the schools and, uh, you know, culinary programs and word of mouth and, you know, Orlando is kind of a smaller city versus, you know, like in New York. So, you know, if the, like uh, uh, the doctor said earlier, people, you know, they talk, everybody talks, you know, it's, it's very, very, important that everybody is just, um, you know, looking at all times, no matter if you're on the clock or not on the clock. Yep. It's true. So I'm uh, going to read a question that just came in as you were talking, sorry. And it's going to go to Dr. Cynthia, because this is a good one. Do you think person to person social media would help meet someone a little better than through a computer? So in terms of, in so terms of, I take it as meeting person to person. Um, person to, I'm, so I'm reading that. I read, I read that differently than what I read. So let's just, let's just twist it around a little bit. Do you think social media is playing a huge toll on who you would hire or where people should go? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Social media is really key for, for the, for the recruitment piece and the, and the marketing about culture and availability and, you know, especially, you know, uh, Gen Z who's, you know, coming up right now and is going heavily into the job market. That's who's here at, at, in college right now. And that is their main tool. And that's how they understand uh, the values of an organization, the culture, the feel of an organization. A lot of that can be conveyed uh, through social media. But with that said, we are a people business. We are a service business. And we emphasize that um, here in our programs is that, yeah, you can get, get your information, you can make your, your, your first kind of introductory, um, um, you know, times uh, through social media, but really the, 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 the package, you know, the presentation, um, uh, you know, preparing a good resume, a good handshake, looking someone in the eyes, the willingness, the openness, the service standard, um, all of that has to be conveyed in person. So I don't know if that helped to answer, but that was, that was my best shot. It worked. It works. I'm, <laughs> I'm touching on social media part. You know, it's something I'm teaching my daughter right now about social media. What you post stays with you forever. So if you're going to go for a big job, you know, if you want to work a big company like the Ritz or Compass or even any country club that has, you know, high profile members or any members, social media reflects you. So Chef West, what's your view on social media and hiring someone? Um, I don't know about legalities on it, but I'm just going to dive into it. What if you were hiring someone, they interviewed great, but then went to their Facebook page just because you happen to see it? It's not illegal to do. You can do it pretty much. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one. I don't know, again, what the, the legalities are um, with hiring or not hiring someone based on social media. Uh, 
if it is a negative reflection of what might be to come, then I would definitely be cautious. Uh, and if it's positive, then I would definitely be optimistic. But it's hard to make a judgment uh, based on just social media. You know, I think everybody has um, different things that they do outside of work. And when we come to work, we we do what we're supposed to do, and we um, engage in our passion. So, you know, from from a hiring standpoint, I think it's a great opportunity to market uh, our team and what we have to offer for someone. And I think that um, you know people that are looking should uh, approach it in the same manner. Uh, you know, it's a it's a reflection of you, and it's an opportunity to market what you're capable of bringing to the table. Okay, I'm just gonna throw it right at you, Chef Jeremy, and then Alice, you're gonna answer that one too on social media. So be ready. So, Chef Jeremy, what social media in your mind? How does it play a role in hiring and not hiring, or whatever it might be? I think it's huge. You know, uh, you know, we encourage our our staff to Instagram what they're what they're if they're working on a new dish, if there's something cool, you know to put it out there because at the end of the day, the people that they know are, are you tend to keep the same company that you are. So, you know, if, if you're someone that is passionate about food and you see that your friend is passionate about food and uh, they're like, you know what, uh, I really like that dish that you put on there, you know, and it starts this conversation of like, can I come work with you type of thing, you know, and, and, you know, to go along those lines of like, if you were to happen to see something that, you know, is, is not so favorable, Remember that, you know, uh, social media is your brand. So that's how you're portraying to the to the world. So if you, you know, post things that are a little maybe off color or maybe not necessarily in the, the greatest light all the time, that can be taken the wrong way. So, you know, just really be careful on, on what you put out there. And I don't say, I don't want to say that I wouldn't hire someone if I see that their social media is unfavorable, but. I would definitely keep an eye on it and something and just, just in the back of my head of, of like, you know, I, I, it wouldn't really sway a decision, but, you know, it's definitely something that is, is would stick with you. You know, it's, it's very, very important that you uh, put yourself out there the way that you want to be seen. 1000%. I love <laughs> the way you said social media is your brand that it, it tells you who you are. That's you, your brand. Like, think about that. That's totally sinking in. Thank you very much. All right, Alice, your turn. Go. What do you have? Yeah, I mean, I 100% I agree. I was going to say those exact words. Um, I think from the business standpoint, there's a lot of um, ways that you can use it to your to your benefit. Um, to what Chef Jeremy just said, you know, have engage your team, find folks who who are genuine about um, sharing their personal passions. Ha, you know, as have them identify. You know, their uh, their opinions are their own, but know that it's part of the the brand. You're working with and for the people, not necessarily for the the name of that business. Um, for 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 folks who are looking um, as far as job seeking, it's a great way to do your research. You know, look at um, what that particular business is. Um, is putting out there, uh, who works there, what are they putting out there, what is the, what is the feel and the vibe. Um, a lot of businesses are spending a lot of time making sure that their vibe is portrayed through um, their social media, not just to potential guests, but also to um, potential workers, right? Because that, that vibe has to be genuine and consistent. You can't, you, you can't project a culture to your staff and then, and then have your business represent something totally different, right? So we're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of uh, coming together of both you know, uh, what makes up a, a full picture of this particular business or the individuals that work there. So it can be extremely beneficial, but also, you know, buyer beware, right? Make sure that, again, this level of professionalism um, that you as an individual are also representing yourself, uh, maybe your passions around food and cooking, et cetera, what you're putting up there. Um, and uh, although I'm not gonna touch on any of the potential legalities, but, um, for employers, sometimes uh, it's becoming a liability. Um, if you have a, somebody in a leadership position or even um, a, 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 an employee that is doing something you know, un, unsavory publicly, that could potentially be a bad reflection on, on yourself as well. Um, and so then it turns into a liability and you're protecting your, your brand uh, by taking action. So it's a uh, devil's in the detail. It is. It is. You all want to see my TikTok dance? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do have a question here. We gotta, we're going to wrap it up a little bit, but um, it's a culinary question for programs. It says, how can secondary culinary programs get more students into the industry earlier? 
Does anyone want to take a stab at that? Dr. Cindy, you're shaking your head. Um, so I, I was thinking about this um, in prior discussion is, you know, one of the things that um, we started thinking about, aside from the emergency right now to get people into the industry, but we have to start thinking, you know, three, four, five years down the line. And so um, we're doing a lot of work with industry partners to go out to high schools and to do guest speaking in high schools or to go to culinary programs and do guest speaking over there and engage with them earlier or to go to summer camps where there's middle schoolers, um, things like that to, to cultivate the interest in culinary and how wonderful the job is and all the different ways you can be, you know, in, in the restaurant. And so um, that's, to me, that, that I, I, I know the emergency is right now, but the investment of time in going further into high school and that, um, and then kind of, you know, partnering um, with different programs, whether they're at community colleges or university or culinary programs or, you know, weekend kinds of culinary programs, whatever, like just, just partnering together and going out a little bit earlier, um, just, just planting some seeds um, with the younger generation, I think is really important. Jeff West, I'm going to go right to you then. Are you planting any seeds in any schools yet? Uh, we do. Like I mentioned, we, we work with the internships uh, with the high schools uh, and also culinary schools. Um, and, you know, it's, it's important to get uh, in touch with these um, uh, potential candidates that might be entering the, the industry later on down the road as early as possible. So, uh, yes, we do. And uh, that's, a, that's a big push for us. Um, as we continue to look forward and, and see what the industry might look like in three to five years. Um, and, and at the same time, we're also still trying to fill the void that we have now. So it's a challenge, but yes, we do reach out and, and plant those seeds and try to follow up on those later on. And not just from a job aspect to everybody on the call, but ACF, your local chapter, should be tapping into high schools as well to discuss what being a chef's all about and loving this organization as much as we all do. I think is huge because then that forms a networking and it's kind of like that old school movie. If you build it, they will come. If we share it, people will get involved, man. It really will. Um, so there was another question over here. I was looking uh, culinary camps. Chef Jeremy, any culinary camps that you might do or be part of or that the Ritz might do? Uh, not really culinary camps, but, you know, uh, it's definitely something with, you know, to go back on the high school part of things, you know, we, we work with some local high schools and we actually just hosted uh, a few months ago, we hosted a culinary competition from uh, Orange County Public Schools here. Uh, so we were able to, to host, you know, almost 250 students uh, that are just really starting to think about what the rest of their life is going to be like after high school and, uh, you know, uh, being able to show them around the property and really um, to, to take them, uh, show them the club lounge and show them the presidential suite and the Royal suite that we sell for $10,000 a night. You know, those are the things that, you know, it really opens up somebody's mind that, okay, I can maybe work here. Cause you know, I'm a product of, of a community college. So it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I work my way up and it's really about what I learned in, uh, through my mentors that, that have made me who I am. So, you know, for culinary camps, it's, it's something that, is definitely on the table and, and, and you know, it's something I definitely want to look at into in the future. It's a great idea. I'm happy to connect with you. I work with uh, Chartwells here in Charlotte and we do a kids culinary camp. Um, they bring the kids in and it's, I don't want to say daycare, but they have a camp and they host a camp on campus and they teach the kids about cooking and get them involved. And that's, that's I've, been great. There, I've been in there and I do exactly what you said. You show them the ropes. Listen, this is what cooking is all about. Don't be, it's hot in here. Oh, that's what a kitchen is. It's hot in a kitchen, kids. You know, they're not all air conditioned. So it's cool that we, we work on that. So I'm happy to connect with you and shoot some ideas. Again, that's really cool. Um, so is it for any more questions? I got a little sidetracked. We were talking a great conversation. I love that. Um, let's see, no more questions there. Oh, yes, I have one last question. I'm gonna go to each one of you. What is your favorite interview question for candidates? Chef Wes. Uh, I've got a couple, you know, when I feel out, uh, if someone's going to be a fit for our operation, it's, it's, um, really most important that I find out what their long-term career goals are. Uh, if they have a, a career goal of being in a restaurant, uh, and I'm in a country club, then 
you know, what value add can I bring to your career? Uh, or are we going to be aligned on, on what you're going to need to get from me? Um, so figuring out what their long-term career goals are important and, and also figuring out the, the level of their passion. Um, are they invested? Are they interested in, or involved in, in things outside of work? Uh, ACF, for example, or other uh, culinary organizations or communities? Um, or is this just a, a punch the clock gig for you, right? I mean, that's, that's really... Um, the gist of, of what I'm trying to find when I do an interview is to figure out how uh, passionate you are and how you're going to line up with what what our um, our direction is as a, as a culinary team. Excellent. I kind of like I kind of like this. It was uh, like wrapping up with uh, your final thoughts. So the interview question that is your final thoughts, man. That's pretty cool. Do you, you want to add anything else before I move on? You you feel good? Uh, yeah, I feel good. I just just want to say thank you again to to ACF and and uh, you chef and, and all the other uh, panelists and Jackie for for inviting me. It's been great, and, and I've learned quite a bit. Uh, and hopefully, I've been able to to uh, shed some light on what it looks like from our side of the industry as well. So, thank you Absolutely. all. Absolutely. All right, Alice, give me your favorite interview question, and then your final thoughts, please. All right. Well, um, I, I typically do the, where do you want to be in five years with the same long-term so that, um, you know, jobs are stepping stones to your career. So even if their long-term isn't, you know, the, the now, um, you can help each other by, by um, making sure that, that, that you, you, that you help them develop those skills to potentially reach your long-term that might change over, over, over the course of, of their time with you, uh, if, if you, you hire them. Um, but uh, in, in light of just uh, not wanting to say the same thing as uh, Chef Wes here. Um, I also like, uh, how would your best friend describe you? Um, I find people start kind of describing themselves a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, what's your, your favorite restaurant um, currently? Um, because that also shows some of their passion coming through when, when people start talking about food or their favorite place to eat, you can really see uh, their kind of reactions. Um, and, and that could be an indicator of, uh, you know, passion or, or personality. Totally, totally. My, my favorite one was uh, describe your favorite meal. You know, like what was their best meal and then see where they go with that. So uh, Dr. Cynthia, favorite interview question, final thoughts? Yeah, so um, I, I always think about and, and you know, we, we um, kind of mentor our, the students to, to understand this too, is interview is a, is a two-way thing, you know? So I always, um, when I am interviewing, I'm, I'm trying to remind myself that I'm also representing the organization and how those interview questions come through is how the candidate is interpreting the organization also. So I try to have some, you know, humility and, and graciousness and trying to like, um, uh, represent the organization, right? And so in doing that, towards the end, I, I like to ask, you know, is there anything that we should know about you that I that we didn't think to ask? Is there anything you would like to add versus, versus you know, you know, do you have any questions for us? You know, something like that, so that it, it you know, kind of hones in on, on what they would like to add. So, and just a final thought, thank you so much for having me. I, I've appreciated being here and I too have learned a lot and been on this panel. Thank, thanks a lot. You're so welcome, Chef Jeremy. So smile, you're on stage, baby. <laughs> What's your favorite yeah. interview question? My favorite is always describe your favorite customer service moment. For me, especially hiring, uh, you know, cooks and other chefs, I want to see how your brain works. And if I ask you a question and, and, and I can see that you went above and beyond, that's going to show me that you go above and beyond every single day in your, your normal job. You know, if, it, if you just make what the guests ask for or whatever it is and you go on your merry way then you're not really thinking outside the box you're not really you know pushing yourself and pushing the restaurant that you're currently in uh to be better you know i'm always uh, challenging my team uh and myself as well to to you know one-up each other you know let, let's really blow these guests out of the water so if i can see that a cook or a chef is is really passionate about just uh service industry in general and, and just you know because you know at the end of the day we're here to service our guests so uh that's that's the one thing that i really look for and you know and, and just in closing thank you again for everyone um all your comments and 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 this is really 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 great and um just really what i would say is think outside the box don't be afraid to ask why you know uh don't just sit there and 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 
think something's going to come your way, ask questions, you know, be the one that's, that's really uh, navigating your, your life. You know, that you're, no one's ever going to drop in your, your lap that you're an executive chef. You've got to push yourself. You've really got to be the, the one that's advocating for yourself. So it's really, really important that you do that. Awesome. Thank you so much. A virtual round of applause to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all the panelists. Um, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days to make this happen. Um, we can't do this without you, as you know. Um, thank you for sharing all your skills, your knowledge, your enthusiasm um, with us and the whole community of the ACF, as well as everyone that's going to be watching this. Thank you so much again to Ecolab for allowing us to bring you this great educational discussion. Um, remember, we hope that you tune in. Actually, I know you're going to tune in to virtually on Monday, April 18th, the next Culinary Leadership uh, Bootcamp. It's uh, 2 p.m. as we welcome the speakers, Master Chef Helmut Hauser and Chef Tim Recker. I've had a fantastic time moderating. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, ACF. You never know what's going to happen in your life. And sure enough, I got the call and here I am today. So I'm gonna pass it back to Jackie for some information about some more awesome virtual and in-person upcoming professional development opportunities. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you. And thank you so much, Jay-Z. Great job moderating today. And thank you, panelists. Really, really great conversation. Really interesting. And to those of you who tuned in, please be on the lookout for a survey that you'll receive in the next day or so, which you'll need to complete to earn your one hour of ACF continuing education hours. Um, as Chef JC mentioned, we do have a boot camp session on Monday, but we also have um, a couple of webinars on April 21st, two different webinars. One will be with a collaboration with La Dame Cessafier on food writing, which you don't want to miss, and also a really interesting session on the utilization of one of my favorite fruits, uh, figs. So join us for one or join us for both. More information is at wearechefs.com. If you just go into the search bar, you can put in webinars um, and you'll get some links uh, in the thank you email as well. Also, please do come out and join us in Texas for the one day advanced pastry summit on May 14th in Dallas. You really don't want to miss this amazing opportunity to learn and see some demos and interact with top notch pastry leaders from across the country. Uh, Chef Susan Nodder, Francisco Magoya, Lashita Perry, Lisa Kirshner, uh, Jennifer Booker. And you'll also have the opportunity to earn your specialized certificate in advanced pastry and a digital badge to add to your resume for when you're looking for your next job. Please visit acfchefs.org and click the events tab to register for ACF summits or to register for ACF National Convention in Las Vegas. We will see you at Caesars Forum July 25th to the 28th. So on behalf of the American Culinary Federation National Office, thank you again. Uh, to our moderator, Chef Jay-Z. Thank you to our speakers and uh, for taking all the time to be here today. We know how busy you are and for sharing your insights. We look forward to seeing you soon and have a great day, everyone.